Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 1 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, played on the Wii Virtual Console. In the last episode, we defeated Bicky the Pirate in Provoca, and uh, he gave us a ship and uh, his promise that he's gonna leave the citizens alone, so we'll take him at his word even though he's a pirate. But when we enter the ship, if you press A and B 55 times together, you get this little mini slide puzzle. So, uh, besides being a nice little uh, time waster and uh, uh, I guess a way to train your brain, uh, you can also gain uh, 100 gold every time you successfully complete the puzzle. So the goal is to get uh, the numbers in order from um, 1 through 15, uh, starting from the top, reading over to the uh, to the right, and then down as if you were uh, writing. So um, yeah, it's just a little small little puzzle. Um, like I said, in some f some of the future editions, uh, the prizes are much better. Uh, but, you know, hey, 100 gold isn't really much to, you know, scoff at this early in the game, so. Although, uh, it is probably better just to, you know, be, uh, playing the game normally, uh, to gain experience, uh, when you're, uh, you know, fighting enemies and stuff, so. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, I just wanna play the puzzle just to complete it. And then I'll, uh, you know, jump back into, uh, the adventure, so. Now with the pirate ship, uh, we have a lot of new places uh, that are opening up for us. Uh, we can go uh, into the inner sea, it's called. Uh, but uh, even though, like I said, the pirate ship opens up a lot of spaces for us, it doesn't open up the entire world. Uh, we're locked uh, to what I said was the inner sea. So we can visit a few places, uh, notably uh, Elfland, which is where uh, the Mystic Key was sent. We're gonna have to get that to uh, unlock all those uh, treasury rooms in uh, Castle Corneria. Um, there's also uh, to the west uh, a dwarf cave, and uh, there's gonna be a little uh, sub um, plot that we have to uh, resolve over there as well. Uh, so, but uh, we'll be going to the dwarf cave first because there's some uh, pretty decent treasure we can get uh, over there. Uh, and uh, Elfland, there's going to be a lot of stuff to buy, uh, so uh, getting that little bit of uh, treasure uh, from the Dwarf Cave will help us out a little bit, so. Uh, unfortunately, this is uh, the part of the game where it kind of gets kind of grindy, um, because uh, Elfland uh, stuff is very, very expensive, uh, and uh, the next dungeon that we got to go to with the Marsh Cave is uh, notorious for a spike in difficulty, uh, mainly because a lot of the enemies have status effects uh, associated with their attacks. So a bunch of enemies can stun you when they hit you, a bunch of enemies can poison you when they hit you, uh, so you want to be going in there with a bunch of uh, heal potions uh, for hit points and pure potions to remove uh, poison. So, But there we just completed the puzzle, we got 100 gold, uh, so, yay! But, uh, before we head off into the sea, uh, there's a few more, uh, encounters that we want to meet over here. So here's one of them right now, the Iguana. So, now, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but, uh, at the very bottom of the, uh, enemy info there, it gives the type of enemy they are. Um, uh, there's, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, there's some certain swords and, uh, that will have uh, special uh, properties against uh, enemies. So you get like a dragon sword, there'll be a giant sword, uh, and they're supposed to deal uh, extra damage to uh, characters in that family type. So if you get the dragon sword, it's supposed to do extra damage to dragons. Uh, if you uh, get the giant sword, it's supposed to do extra damage to giant enemies. Unfortunately, like many other things in this game, uh, that is not properly coded and doesn't work, so. Let's talk with the Provokans. I've escaped from Melmond in the west. My town's in trouble. Please help. Well, we can't get to Melmond, because like I said, we're locked to the inner sea. In order to get to Melmond, we have to, uh, help the dwarves out. We have to help a dwarf, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, make a canal, uh, kind of like the Panama Canal, to allow our ship to get out to the outer sea. So, like I said, we'll be confined uh, to the inner sea for a while, but uh, that's okay. Get that, that short sword there. 
uh, gives a little bit more hit percentage and damage than the rapier. So, but uh, eventually you want to get a better weapon, uh, but it's going to be really expensive, the silver sword back in Elfland, so. Ships can stop only at ports. There are no, there are no ports in the north. So in order to go to the towns in the north, we're going to have to get some other form of transportation. Thanks to you, we don't need to be afraid of pirates anymore. Well, no problem. Now, it's Vicky. I won't be any more bother, I promise. Okay. And he's not, so. The elves live across the sea. Matoya's herb is the only thing that can wake their prince. And he says the same thing. Don't need to be afraid of pirates anymore. That's good. So. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a lot of grinding. I'm gonna point out uh, a place where I'll be doing uh, grinding. Uh, once we get over to uh, the Elfland area. But before we do that grinding, we want to go uh, find a few new enemies over here before we leave this uh, part of the continent. So let's just keep walking around here. There's a random encounter we already encountered. So, in time, we'll just uh, heal ourselves up. You know, healing. One of the good things about the boat is uh, we can travel easily to Corneria, uh, and that's the cheapest inn. So, uh, we can save a little bit of money on inns, uh, and healing up and saving our games, once we get the, uh, now that we have the ship. So here's the last enemy we want to run into, the Mad Pony. So, he has two attacks, so sometimes you may see when he hits, uh, one of our characters says, uh, hit times two. Eventually we'll be able to do, uh, two hits as well, uh, once we get, uh, that 32, uh, hit percentage, so we'll need a few more levels on uh, Marty and Wibbly. Wibbly will get it when he hits level uh, level 10. He gets uh, three uh, uh, hit percentage uh, every level up, and he starts with two, so at level 10, uh, he'll get that magic 32. That's when you want to take off the nunchucks from him. Uh, he'll start being uh, a better fighter with his fists. Uh, so he'll actually get more attacks, so he'll be getting like four attacks, so he'll be hitting with uh, both his fists, so each fist will hit twice, so that's when uh, he'll become like a real big powerhouse. So, but until he becomes that powerhouse, uh, Marty will be the powerhouse, because uh, he'll get that silver sword, and he'll reach the magical uh, 32 uh, hit percentage before uh, Wibbly does. Because the silver sword gives uh, quite a decent boost to uh, hit percentage. So here we go back to Corneria. Uh, like I said, it's the best place to heal because the uh, inn is cheap. So, yeah, the Silver Sword gives 15% to that hit percentage, so... And uh, 23 damage, so... Very strong weapon and good hit percentage, so... It'll uh, carry us through for a long, long time. Until we start getting elemental swords. Which, unfortunately, like other things in this game, are bugged. Here we have a new sea enemy, the Kazoku, which is uh, Japanese, I believe, for pirate. So these guys give a lot of gold, so... There is a trick on the regular Nintendo console. Uh, I don't know if it works on the Wii console, on uh, the Wii Virtual Console. But uh, you can, like, save your game, res uh, do a hard reset, and uh, that'll be the first encounter you meet. So it's a good way to gain a lot of gold. But they don't give a lot of experience, so when we're doing grinding for the gold to buy all the stuff in Elfland, uh, we'll be mainly fighting to the east of Elfland. There's a, a plane section there, and uh, we'll be fighting groups of ogres and creeps. So, they're a common group over there, but hey, here's the dwarf cave. We're gonna get uh, quite a bit of good, uh, uh, some treasure in here. Unfortunately, there's uh, one room that's locked by the Mystic Key, and that has the most treasure, but we can get these two chests right here. 575 and 450, so a little over a thousand gold. With the crystal, even the blind can see, Asto stole it from Matoya. Matoya's name is popping up a lot. Hooray! Yeah, the dwarves don't say uh, lolly ho like they do in some future games. Did you meet Smith, our blacksmith? Not yet. With the crystal, even the blind can see, Asto stole it from Matoya. The earth is rotting slowly from the west. That's where uh, Melmond is and that guy escaped from. 
Well, this is Smith, obviously. For the Light Wars, I'll make a truly legendary sword. However, my supply of adamant is exhausted. The bracelet can protect you like armor. And the bracelets are good for, like, wizard classes who can't equip heavy armor. That sound? Narek is digging a canal. Yeah, we're gonna have to help uh, Narek uh, finish his canal in order to be able to get uh, out of the inner sea and get to Melmond and a bunch of other places in the uh, world, but... A rock blocks my construction of con my canal. If I only had TNT. You know, these rocks are blocking his way, so... We gotta get some dynamite for him. But we won't be able to get that until we get the Mystic Key. And we won't be able to get behind this door until we get the Mystic Key. So if you've been keeping track, we have two doors in Corneria Castle locked by the Mystic Key. This door in the Dwarf Cave. And we also have two um, doors locked by the Mystic Key in the Temple of Fiends. So yeah, once we get that Mystic Key, a lot of uh, backtrack I'm going to have to do to get a bunch of treasure. We already talked with that dwarf. These ones are new, we know that. That sound? Yep, he said the same thing. I'm looking for the floater. I bet with with it I could float anything. Very important item. Hooray! And our last dwarf. Dwarfs can see in the dark. Nice. We can see in the dark too because uh, the dark spell is bugged in this game. Doesn't work. So there's no point in us getting it. There's also um, no point in getting the lamp spell, which removes the dark status from your characters in battle. Uh, dark uh, is removed from uh, your characters after battle, so there's no real reason to uh, cure it in battle. Because like I said, it's bugged, it doesn't work, so... The, the bugged nature of the dark spell means we don't have to buy it for the black mage, and we don't have to buy the lamp to cure it for the white mage. So... We got sea hags here. Most uh, sea enemies will be weak against the lightning. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the only lightning spells we have right now, uh, lightning one, they only target one enemy. So, not all that good uh, against large groups of sea hags like this. Uh, eventually, we'll be able to get uh, lightning two in Elfland. And the level two and level three uh, black magic spells, they can actually hit an entire group. And one of the best things about uh, level 2 uh, spells is later on in the game, there's a lot of equipment that you can get that uh, cast level 2 spells for free. So, uh, yeah, that'll be really, really good. Actually, the first uh, item that we can get that does that is uh, the Zeus's Gauntlet. Uh, not a very good piece of armor uh, in terms of defensive gear. I don't think anybody in our uh, party can use it. But uh, it can be used to cast uh, infinite amounts of lightning too. So once you get that, it'll be uh, really good for fighting sea monsters. So and eventually, when we run into the uh, the uh, sea shrine where the fiend of water is, remember we have to uh, restore the light to all the elemental crystals that we have, the four orbs. So we're gonna have to take out four elemental fiends. But uh, of course, in the meantime, we have a lot of uh, little quests we gotta do in in Elfland. So this is where the game ramps up its difficulty, uh, and uh, got a lot of stuff going on. So uh, I mentioned the Zeus Gauntlet that none of our characters can use it. Uh, same is gonna apply with that legendary sword that that. Uh, uh, Smith, the dwarf uh, weaponsmith, can make. Uh, eventually, much later in the game, uh, in the second to last dungeon, we can get awesome adamant and uh, take it back to Smith, and he forms the second strongest sword in the game, Excalibur. But that sword can only be used by knights, and uh, knights are the upgraded fighter class. And uh, since we don't have any knights in this party, well, uh, we won't be able to use that sword, so. Totally pointless for us, but we'll still get it because, you know, 100% completion, but I will be doing a second playthrough of this that will include, uh, that will have knights in it, so it'll be, uh, two knights and two thieves, the two, uh, classes that I haven't been using in this, uh, that I'm not using in this playthrough, so yeah, if you want to experience all the classes in the game, you're pretty much going to have to do at least two playthroughs, because... You can only have uh, four, and there's six total, so... 
Well, 12, because 12, you count, like, the upgraded classes. At a certain point in the game, uh, you can do a mini-quest and, uh, have your characters advance. So your, uh, red mage becomes a red wizard, your black belt becomes a master, white mage becomes a white wizard, black mage becomes a black wizard, fighters become knights, and thieves become ninjas. We want to, of course, pick up the uh, level 2 spells for some of our characters here. Uh, get the ice spell for, uh, we'll get, uh, get it for Marty and for, uh, Milo. Uh, we want to also get some white magic for, uh, Fibs, the A-Lit and Invis spell. Uh, A-Lit protects you from lightning, uh, attacks, and Invis is kind of like a ruse, but you can use it on anybody, not just the caster. So that's a, g a good defensive spell to pick up. So, but uh, the main thing we want to do is uh, we want to head to Elfland first and uh, get that silver sword. That's going to be the big purchase because that's going to make uh, Marty a pretty big powerhouse and uh, help us with the grind that we're going to have to do. So, also, uh, like I said, some level 2 elemental spells are available in Elfland and uh, they will also help with the grind. So, not as much as the silver sword because we'll have really low charges of the level 2 elemental spells, but. Once we get uh, a bunch of those spell charges, uh, they'll be uh, really effective in helping us grind. And they'll also help us grind in a special place, the Peninsula of Power, but that'll be for a future episode. So, But uh, come back for the next episode where we're going to cross the sea and uh, head to Elfland where a lot of adventure awaits. Take care, have a good day. Bye!